I am here to teach you how to make you money. See, the thing is, society has told us all we have to do is go to school, get good grades, get a good job, keep climbing up the corporate ladder, save a bit of money, maybe invest it, and then have a nice, peaceful life post-retirement. But the thing is, billions of people have done that and are now getting screwed over by a cost of living crisis where everything is getting more expensive and no one can survive anymore. And the only way to get out of it is to make more money. Not save it, make it. It is more than possible to become financially abundant at a young age, and I spent the last few years improving my financial literacy so that now I can teach you how. So this is how you enter your rich girl era. Make more money. Have it grow for you while you sleep. Be smarter with your finances and build the mindset of a millionaire. Let's go. Chapter one, what the rich don't tell you. This is about learning how to distinguish everything we were taught in school, all of the wrong information that was given to us to have a scarcity mindset around money, to have the poor girl mindset, and now how we're going to learn about how a rich person thinks and how we're going to adopt that into our daily life now. And of course, to make this super easy to understand, we're gonna bring in our favorite girls, Lola and Athena. Lola has a poor girl's mindset. So she thinks things like, yeah, I probably shouldn't go out to eat as much this month because I have to save as much money as I can in my bank account. Okay, maybe if I stop getting my nails done, stop going to Starbucks, then I can save an extra 20, 30 pounds every single month and put it in my bank account to save and then I won't touch it. I just can't afford to eat healthily anymore. I'm gonna have to start living on ramen because everything's gotten so expensive. Okay, money's looking really tight right now. So I'll pick up some extra hours at work and then I'll get another job to work every weekend. I just know I'm gonna be able to save up that extra 2,000 pounds over the next few years so that I can finally buy myself that Louis Vuitton bag. Now let's dissect what's wrong with Lola's mindset and how it's actually digging her into a deeper hole. So Lola said that she wants to save as much money as she can into her bank account. But what nobody tells you is that money in a safe savings bank account is money wasted. Believe it or not, the rich stay rich by spending their money and moving it around constantly. They do not let it sit in a savings account far away that they don't touch, just letting that money collect dust. And this is due to something called inflation. If you have 10,000 pounds saved away in a bank account somewhere, as the years go on, inflation rises and that 10,000 pounds loses its value. Meaning when you come back to it in a decade to spend it, it's not gonna be worth nearly as much. So instead, the rich move their money and invest it into real estate and into stocks to allow their money to grow for them as time goes on. This is still a way of saving your money, but doing it in a smarter way. The rich girl mindset also knows that spending money is beneficial to you, whereas Lola would think that she has to save everything and cut back her expenses. The key is to redirect most of your expenses which are going onto clothes and unnecessary items to then into things that are gonna benefit you in the long run, like financial literacy books, buying courses to uh, learn a particular high income skill so that you can earn more money, spending that money on opportunities, on networking events, basically spending money to make money. Lola also thinks that once she stops getting her nails done and she stops buying Starbucks, then she'll be okay financially. But this is wrong because when you're picking up these penny pitching habits, you are then living in a financial scarcity mindset every single day. Meaning you are continuously reprogramming your subconscious to live in this poor girl mindset always. You are always telling yourself that there is a lack around money, there will never be enough, you'll never be able to afford nice things. This negatively impacts your manifestations and will affect where you end up in life. So quitting Starbucks and canceling your Spotify subscription will not significantly impact your financial freedom in the future. You must shift your mindset from saving money to making more money. Lola also complains about having to live off of foods like ramen because she feels guilty about spending more money in the grocery store on healthy foods. You are exchanging that currency in the store for wellness and energy and fueling your body with all of the right nutrients. When you skimp on things like a gym membership or healthy food, you are then depriving yourself of the ability to operate at your best self in your body. Your money is put to very good use when it's spent on nourishing your body and mind. Lola also said that she's going to pick up more hours at work and maybe get an extra job on the weekend to make more money. This is wrong. Working extra jobs for other people is the worst financial decision you can make. Why? Because your income will always be capped because you are trading your time for money constantly. Meaning when you fall sick, when you need to take a holiday, when you can't show up, you are not making money. Plus when you're working for other people, majority of your money will end up going to taxes anyway. So right now, if you do have to work your nine to five, do that and then spend your extra time learning how to make money online and how to build up a passive income source so that you are still earning money 
while you sleep. And lastly, Lola's dreams are to save up around 2,000 pounds to buy her first designer handbag. Now I am all for enjoying life and buying nice things for yourself, but we're gonna talk about that more later. But right now, all I'm gonna say is that this is the wrong mindset to have because when you spend 2,000 pounds on a Louis Vuitton bag, you are not then just down 2,000 pounds, you're actually down 40,000 pounds. You know why? Because if you took that 2,000 pounds in your early 20s and invested it into stocks, into a high risk pension fund, over the years, that would grow into tens of thousands of pounds depending on your age and when you invest. And this is an example of an asset versus a liability. If you are in a place where you have to intentionally plan and put money aside to be able to buy yourself that designer bag, then it is a liability to you because then that is a lot of money coming out of your pocket. An asset is something that brings you money in. For example, not spending that 2,000 pounds on a bag, but spending that exact same 2,000 pounds in investing it, and then it will bring you in so much money instead. Plus, I also wanna say you should not even think about buying anything designer until you can buy more to pull up it. My rule is don't buy something unless you can buy three of it. Now let's quickly run through Athena's rich girl mindset in comparison. My main priority is making sure that I'm living as my best and healthiest self so that I can give all of the energy into actually making more money and building up businesses and showing up as my best self every single day. I am focused on making more money to fund my lifestyle rather than penny pinching to save as much as I can. Plus I have an abundance mindset. Whatever I spend, I attract. Money always comes back to me. I'm going to transfer all of my disposable income into my investments and then anything spare I'll probably put into my ISA account so my money is always growing for me. I'm focused on spending money to make money. So even though money's tight right now, I'm gonna prioritize putting it into financial literacy books, reinvesting in my business, so then I can generate more and more through my business and hopefully buying my first rental property one day. Money is looking kind of tight right now, so I'm probably gonna go on YouTube and learn some high income skills so that I can start charging my clients for more through my online business, or I might set up one more passive income source that doesn't take up a lot of my time, but will still generate enough income in the background when I'm doing other things. Now let's talk about why this mindset is going to make Athena rich. Athena said that money is a bit tight for her right now, so she's gonna focus on building up further passive income sources to generate money while she's focusing on other things. This is an example of her diversifying her income. She is not putting all of her eggs in one basket. She knows that the average millionaire has seven income sources, whereas the average person in the UK or the US only has one, and that's their nine to five. She also knows that a savings account isn't gonna get her anywhere, so she doesn't even take the time to open up an extra savings account. Instead, she has her stock investments and she also has an ISA. Now this is gonna make her money grow at a slightly slower rate for sure, but any gains she makes on the money she invests into this ISA account all of the gains will be tax free. That is basically free money. You can put in maximum 20,000 pounds into an ISA every single year. That is the only kind of savings account you should be considering. And then you touch it in a few years time, maybe when you're ready to buy your first home. And there would have been so much money that has grown on top of it. All it takes is a quick Google search or contact your bank to learn how to set up your ISA account if you are based in the UK. This way she's constantly moving her money around so it's working for her and it's not losing value due to future inflation. And lastly, Athena has an amazing mindset because she is not focused on showing off to others. Many people make this a priority. They wanna look richer than they actually are. She knows she has the money in her account right now to go out and afford a Gucci bag, but she also knows the value of that Gucci bag is gonna to continue to decrease every single year. So what's the point? The only type of designer bag that's an asset is a Birkin. I know you're sat there probably thinking, oh, okay, so I know I have to build up a passive income source, but that sounds easier than it actually is. And how do I know what to do? I got you, okay? First of all, all it takes is a Google search. Literally just type in passive income ideas. There are so many, like thousands of articles on the internet where people will lay it out for you, but to make your life easier, I'm gonna give you some ideas right now. Pick a subject that you know really, really well and then invest some time into building a course online. There are so many websites online, so like I think Kajabi is one, Skillshare is one. All you have to do is literally spend maybe a week putting in all of your time and energy to build up this course with the most valuable knowledge, put it out onto the internet and then it's done. You literally don't have to work or touch on it again and then it is consistently generating revenue in the background while you are focusing on your other endeavors as people continue to buy your course on the internet to to learn your knowledge. Then we have the most popular way to build up a passive income source and this is building up a business. For example, it could be an e-commerce business like on Shopify selling jewelry like me for example. You can work on it to the point where you can eventually step aside from the business, hire people to run it for you and go off and enjoy your life. 
then you're waking up to money every single day and not even having to work hard for it. You can set up an ATM business, a vending machine business, look at investing in dividend stocks, start a YouTube channel, your face doesn't even need to be on it. I've said this in another video before, people literally upload two hour fireplace videos on YouTube and you'll spend one weekend pushing out all of these videos on YouTube and then your YouTube AdSense is constantly generating your money all the time because these videos are watched by millions of people all over the world every single day and you will be making money like that. Another great passive income source idea is to just sell downloadables on the internet. All you need is to go to canva.com, it's completely free. Let's say you make artwork, say you make prints for people to print off and like put in their home. Save your digital art, sell it on Etsy. You don't need to ship to anywhere. All people will do is they'll maybe spend three to five pounds to download this artwork that you made in five minutes on Canva to then print out and put it in their home. I have two prints in my apartment right now that I bought off someone from Etsy. I know they spent five minutes on this on Canva, but I couldn't be bothered to do it, so I bought it from someone. And once again, it takes one day of creating this art, putting on Etsy, letting it run in the background, and the money just keeps rolling in, and you don't have to do anything from that point. And the list keeps going on and on and on. But if you are a teenager, or if you are really struggling to commit any time at all to building up any of these sources, I get it, life gets in the way, then I have the perfect thing for you, and it's an app called Honey Gain. So Honey Gain is a free app you can download on the App Store and I'm going to teach you guys how to use it. So basically the purpose of this is all you're going to do is while you're working, while you're sleeping, whatever you're doing, you can just press this little power saving mode button here, enable that, your screen will dim as if it's off, put it on the side, go about your day and do whatever you want to do and whilst you're doing that is generating you money. When you are using this app consistently, it would be able to generate you enough income to cover your Spotify or Netflix subscription. Netflix or Spotify subscription every year is about 120 pounds. That is 120 pounds that you could be investing and multiplying, doubling, tripling. At the end of the day, the key to successfully investing is starting as early as possible. And this is due to something called compound interest. This app is gonna allow you to invest at an earlier stage without having to do anything at all. If you still think this is too good to be true, you can check out Honey Game on Trustpilot, tens of thousands of people endorse them online and show proof of the money they've made by using this app. If you connected 10 devices to this, you could literally be earning at least $30 every single month. The way Honeygain works is that you generate the easiest passive income ever by just sharing your internet connection with Honeygain. And also not to worry, the app will not collect any of your private data or anything like that. So don't wait any longer. You officially have no more excuses to have an extra income source. Remember, diversifying your income is the key. You can use my code or the link in the description. All of the info will be on the screen and at the top of the description to sign up today and get an extra extra $5 added to your account so you can start earning ASAP. Chapter two, making and investing money. So let's talk about the main benefit as to why you should be investing at all and why it should never be an option that you skip out on. If you are in your early 20s and you invest 200 to 300 pounds every single month, or let's say you just invest one lump sum in your early 20s of 10,000 to 20,000 pounds without paying anything out after that, you will be a millionaire by the time you retire, given that you do this in your early 20s. Now, I've just given you rough numbers and not an exact figure because it all depends on your age. If you start when you're 16, 17, 18, you're gonna be in a better place than the rest of us. This is due to compound interest. The key to investing is to start as early as possible, even if it means you are just investing five pounds every single month. Being a millionaire isn't just capped by your retirement fund. You can still reach financial abundance at an earlier age and reach millionaire status if that's your goal right now by focusing on making more money instead of saving money and then pouring that into stocks and real estate. There are plenty of coaches online that teach you how to make 10K plus a month passively. If you have a Wi-Fi connection and you have the internet at your fingertips, there are truly no excuses for you. Whenever people talk about putting aside 200 pounds every single month in your 20s to invest, people on the internet complain and they're like, oh, but who has 200 pounds spare in their early 20s in a cost of living crisis? Stop, you are making excuses. What is you commenting that on the internet? Where is that getting you? Stop just simply existing and accepting your fate and start taking action to actually change it. I already gave you guys several passive income stream ideas in the last chapter, so let's say you pick one of those, right? Let's say you're finally making a few thousand extra a month, let's say you're on 10K a month. 
Now what do you do? In order to achieve financial freedom, you have to get into the investing game and there are a few ways to do this. What I just mentioned about investing 200 pounds every single month in your early 20s consistently to then have that grow to a million by the time you retire, you can do that by investing into a high risk pension. That's what I'm personally doing so that by the time I reach retirement, I'll have this big lump of money. Invest in having a pension advisor who's gonna do all of this work for you. The second way to make and invest and grow your money is to open a business. The reason that running a business is superior to working a nine to five for the rest of your life is that not all of your money is going to go to taxes. When you work a nine to five and your salary is £100,000 a year, that £100,000, all of it is getting taxed and then you're losing about £25,000, let's say, to taxes. When you run a business and your annual turnover is £100,000, so you're making the same amount, you're only getting taxed on 50k because the other 50k you can write off for business expenses. Plus that 50k that you're writing off in expenses, they're not bad expenses. You shouldn't be in this business of trying to save so much money you're making your money work for you. So th that 50K in expenses was 50K to hire and pay your employees who are then working for you so you can step back from the business, they'll run the business for you, grow it for you, so then you're making way more than 100K anyway. And it might sound like a lot, but you are more than capable of doing it right now if you can pour the energy and time into it. I have a friend who's 21 and she can literally step back from her e-commerce business and have it run for her because she poured her time into it when she was 17, she hired employees, and now she's financially free. But you don't even need to open a traditional business in that sense. You could do Amazon FBA, you could do drop shipping, you could flip things on eBay and make a profit. The third and most common way to invest is with stocks or what we like to call ETFs. A bunch of ways to do this. You can even download free apps on the app store to do it. I'm personally using an app called Trading212 and this is where you can buy stocks. The easiest way to explain what an ETF is, is it's basically a group of 100 companies in the stock market or 500 companies and you are investing a little portion in every single one rather than choosing random companies like Apple or Tesla or Microsoft and just putting a little bit of money towards each. An ETF makes sure that you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket. You're making a more safe decision because you have a little bit invested everywhere. Once again, all it takes is a little bit of research to know what you should be investing in. What I do is I literally go on TikTok and I watch what other people are doing, what are the most popular ETFs. The fourth way to invest is real estate. Now, a lot of people get this twisted, okay? People think one day I'm gonna save up to buy my first home and then I'm gonna live in it, I'll have a house, whatever, and in 40, 50 years time, it's gonna triple in value and I'm gonna be a millionaire. That's not how it works and you've been taught wrong. A lot of people think that the house they're saving up for their whole life and end up living in will double in value and therefore is an asset but it's not it's actually a liability and you know why because you're living in it and you're paying the mortgage that means money is leaving your pocket if money is leaving your pocket the thing is a liability okay assets come with cash flow the house you're living in doesn't because of the amount of money that you pay with uh, renovations maintenance doing it up the amount of money you're paying monthly with the mortgage not to mention the added value the house will get within 40 to 50 years are you taking inflation into account because that big number you're imagining right now isn't going to be worth that much in the future. Rental properties, on the other hand, are assets. This is when you buy a property, maybe you'll do it up a little bit and then you'll start renting it out to other people and essentially you become their landlord. That every single month is cash flow into your pocket. The mortgage you have to pay is factored into the rent they pay you every single month plus profit and therefore you're making money every single month. Another great way to do this to get extra cash flow and very fast is to do something called a HMO. This is when there's multiple occupancy within a home. So let's say you buy a house to rent out but you rent out every single bedroom. This means you'll have maybe three or four rental incomes from these each people coming into your pocket every single month. Talk about an asset. And the fifth way to make money, very simple, multiple streams. For example, let's say right now you as a beginner, one stream of income is your nine to five. Now let's say you're putting in 20 pounds every single month into an ETF on the stock market. That is your second stream of income. Your third stream of income is let's say you've started a Depop business or you're flipping things on eBay. Your fourth, let's say you've written an ebook on something that you're really good at and specialize in or you've set up a course. You spent two or three weekends working towards it, you're selling it online and I was generating you passive income all the time. Or if you're older and you're a little bit more financially stable, let's say your fifth one is that you own a HMO, you're renting out properties to other people. Another great passive income source is become a UGC influencer. This is when you don't need to create kind of like a name for yourself. You don't need to have hundreds of thousands of followers. Essentially, you're specializing in content creation for brands. So you build up a portfolio and you ask brands to send you products for free to start off with. And you basically create ad content for them that they can post 
on their pages as, as, as if an actual influencer made it for them. All you specialize in is the filming, the editing, the photography, if that's what you're interested in. You can do this with zero followers. Once you've built up a portfolio and a client base, brands will literally start paying you to make content for them. I know people that make 10K plus doing this every single month and it's fun. To sum up, yes, there are cons. Yes, it takes time to build up. Yes, it's difficult, but guess what? Nobody said it was going to be easy. And with everything you do in life, that is a difficulty that comes with it. Setting up a business, yes, you'll make more money and one day be able to step aside from the business and retire early but you are going to have to put in hundreds of hours in the first few years and essentially you will use your freedom because of all of the stresses that you're taking on as one individual person but a nine to five you have more of a work-life balance but your income will be capped for the rest of your life there is a bad side to everything in life you just need to pick the bad side that's worth it for you chapter number three your new habits and your new mindset step number one is to rewire your brain and get rid of all of the false information and narratives you've been sold your entire life for example i know people whose parents have passed on to them their scarcity mindset because of the way they struggled financially in their life but their child is in a better position because they did better at school they have certain talents that their parents didn't have they have so much more opportunity in their life and their they're not taking it because they're adopting the mindset their parents want, once had, even though their circumstances are different. The best thing you can do for yourself is to stop listening to your parents' way of doing things because when they were your age, that was a very long time ago and things have changed, okay? We now live in the age of the internet where anything is possible. Don't start limiting yourself before you've even begun because of the pressures that other people are putting onto you. And instead, start building your abundance mindset and believe you are going to be a millionaire one day. You are going to be financially abundant at a young age. This links into step number two. Start exposing yourself to all of the possibilities out there. This is the easiest way to start building up your abundance mindset and rewiring your subconscious mind. This links into the podcast you listen to, the books you read, the videos you watch, the people you listen to. From the age of 16, I would regularly watch motivational speeches from extremely wealthy and successful people on YouTube. And when I was 17, I read my first financial literacy book, which was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I highly recommend this. And instantly that got me out of the mindset that I had been taught for the last 17 years of my life in school, which was that I had to work a nine to five. Because I had been exposed myself to books like that and listening to people who had made it I was normalizing success to myself normalize visualizing your dream life book a viewing for your dream apartment even if you're not gonna buy it go window shopping in designer store outlets Go to networking events with people who have already made it. Put yourself in those rooms. That is the epitome of the rich girl lifestyle and mindset. Step number three, outcome over cost. This is where we bring in poor girl mindset versus rich girl mindset again. Poor girl mindset always looks at the price of things and thinks, oh, that pillowcase is 50 pounds or that course is 100 pounds, not worth it. I'm not spending my money on that. Rich girl mindset looks at that cost and thinks a good night's sleep more knowledge to be able to build up more skills to offer more services to my clients so I can have a better passive income business, worth it. It's like I said before, you have to spend money to make money and some costs are just worth it based on the outcome they give you. When I was 19 years old and I was a broke uni student, I spent 70 pounds on an ebook about social media marketing and oh my God, it hurt to spend that money on that. I would not buy myself clothes at this point. I was not buying myself new makeup. I had very, very little money and I was stressed financially all the time. I reread that book every single week for the next three years and I learned how to build a community online, how to be a successful content creator over and over and over again. And I made it. Step number four, credit cards make you richer. This is a poor girl mindset misconception. A lot of people look at credit cards and don't touch them because they assume that, you know, it's really bad debt and people get into trouble with them and, you know, I don't need a loan. It's not about needing a loan. It's about being smarter with your money. The literal second you qualify for a credit card, you need to have one for the sole purpose of building up your credit score. And that is going to help when you are renting out your first apartment, buying your first home, setting up your real estate business, for example. All it takes is setting a reminder in your phone the same day every single month so you are paying off your debts right so you are going to put every single one of your daily expenses on your credit card your grocery bill your transport any food that you buy when you're out with your friends your cinema tickets whatever and you're going to keep paying everything on this credit card and then simply transfer your debit card money over to your credit card to pay that all off and as you do this over the months your credit score will start building once you have a good credit score paired with good money that you're making you will then be able to qualify for an american express card i currently have the gold one and basically, once again, this is about being smarter with your money. I pay for everything on my Amex before I pay it off every single month with the money I actually have. 
And what this does is all of the money that you're spending on your Amex then converts into points and they give you money towards your grocery bill, towards things like ASOS, buying makeup, buying clothes. Essentially you get free money so you are saving in other areas of your life just by using this card. Step number five, close the knowledge gap. For example, to make it really easy for you, let's say you love your nine to five, you love the field that you're in and you wanna stay there. There's nothing wrong with that, right? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna close the knowledge gap by consistently self-educating on the side of doing your job. Educating to be the best in your field. Let's say you're a marketing assistant, you wanna be moving up the corporate ladder to get to marketing manager and move to big corporations like Coca-Cola or Disney, for example. You wanna work at these big companies, so you constantly need to be doing courses and things on the side to add to your resume so that you can interview at these bigger companies and keep increasing your salary. After that, if you don't wanna do a business or passive income stream, that's fine. Make sure that your salary keeps increasing at your nine to five and then invest big portions of that every single month, aka invest in your self-education. Learning should never stop, whether you wanna stay in your nine to five, whether you're looking at building up businesses. Before you do that, learning comes first. When you become the best at what you do in your field, the money starts coming in naturally. Step number six, stop buying to show off and start buying to tax write off. If you are a business owner and you wanna start setting up these passive income streams, you're gonna set up yourself a limited company and then you're gonna to have to start doing your taxes yourself basically or really you should be getting an accountant to sort this for you as a business owner before i buy anything i see everything is more expensive than it actually is because i think once i buy this i'm also going to have to pay ta tax on it at the end of the year whereas if i start investing in building a team and hiring an assistant hiring a video editor then i'm being smarter with my money and i'm growing my business while also saving money step number seven avoid the unhappy and the unlucky that is a law from the book the 49 laws of power if i'm remembering correctly and basically the author Robert Greene talks about avoiding avoiding these infectious types of people over the last few years of my life I've become so picky with who I surround myself with I don't talk or I'm not friends with anybody who has a scarcity mindset constantly talks about how unlucky they are it might sound extreme it might sound rude or picky I'm okay with that every single person in my life even though I have a small circle is so ambitious and so positive that just being around them even if we're not having that particular conversation that energy spreads onto me just as it would if someone was constantly unhappy and unlucky they are like this infectious type that will bring you down with them step number eight stop saying I can't afford this and start saying how can I afford this. This is once again another example of moving towards an abundance mindset. Stop thinking that there isn't enough money to go around and your language and your thoughts are everything. It literally creates your reality. So if you want something, stop thinking that you can't have it and start visualizing a future where you do get it and start formulating the plan of how can I now increase my monthly income to start be able to affording these luxuries. Step number nine, always live below your means. I have always balanced my abundance mindset with acting like I don't have enough money to spend on myself. So when I was in university, all of my friends and I, we had the same student loan. They were using it to buy AirPods, the new iPhone, nice clothes. I think I bought myself AirPods six years after they even came out because I just didn't see them as a worthy enough purchase. And I was constantly putting money away, putting money away. And because I did that, I was able to afford the electrical equipment, the camera, and everything I needed to set up the business I wanted to do, which was YouTube and content creation. By saving up that money to then put towards these things, I invested my money in a smart way where now, because I did that and I was able to start my passive income business faster, now my business is generating me income and I've made up all of that money back, if not more. But of course, I'm all about faking it to you make it and embodying that rich girl mindset energy and depending on your circumstance if you're like me when I was in uni and I truly did not have much at all to spend you need to start emulating luxury once again to normalize it to yourself you know so some of us to emulate luxury we can get our nails done every single month if you're not in that situation have a spa day at home start giving yourself a mani pedi book a massage for yourself maybe two or three times a year to normalize that luxury and treatment for yourself to know that that's the direction you're headed in and step number 10 in your new habits and mindset is start using the right language. Stop speaking scarcely and describing yourself with weak words. Your words create your reality and now you need to change what you're saying to yourself on a daily basis. And of course, this goes hand in hand with daily affirmations, which I'm gonna be sharing with you guys right at the end of this video. And lastly, chapter number four, the homework chapter with affirmations right at the end. Homework task number one, sign up for a credit card right now. Once you get it, you're gonna put a monthly reminder in your phone calendar to make sure you're paying it off every single month. When you don't pay it off or you're late, that's when you have to start paying interest and you get 
get in trouble with the bank. Home at task number two, start looking up networking events in your area and go to one ASAP. This is so you can start surrounding yourself with people that are where you wanna be, people with similar ambition and mindset so you can start adopting that energy and normalizing that lifestyle and experience to yourself. Home at task number three, choose a passive income stream. It can be one of the streams that I mentioned in this video or you can go and do some researching on Google, YouTube, even TikTok as a search engine. Look at what everyone is saying. There are literal content creators that specialize in telling you guys good passive income streams. Choose one, start one ASAP. Home at task number four, download the app Snoop if you don't have it already. This is something I use on a daily basis and this really helps me with, with responsible spending. Number five, start some form of self-education this week. It could be in the form of reading a book. I'll give you guys recommendations in a minute. Starting a podcast where people are talking about how to invest. Step number six, start budgeting your monthly income. Have a certain portion that's gonna go into your pension, a certain portion that's gonna go to stocks and a certain portion that's gonna go into an ISA. If you don't have one already, start Googling that and open that account ASAP. Step number seven, buy and read the following books rich dad poor dad by robert kiyosaki but the entire collection i believe there are three or four books so you're going to read the original and then he has a few books after that really go into detail on how to invest another great book is called think and grow rich this is by napoleon hill the third book is called the four hour work week i can't remember the author but once again i read this when i was 17 it changed my life and my complete mindset around business and how i wanted my career to go and lastly girls that invest by simran Kaur. i literally just ordered that book and i'm on two days ago i can't wait to start reading it but the reviews are phenomenal so we can read it together at the same time and your last homework task is get an accountant ever since i did this my finances have transformed i've had financial advice that i didn't even consider before it's such a smart move so especially if you're a business owner please get on that asap and lastly our financial affirmations i am financially abundant money flows into my life easily. I am aligned with the energy of wealth and abundance. The more money I spend, the more money I have and receive. I am worthy of increasing my income. I release any negative financial energy. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am so grateful for the ability to manifest money whenever I want it. Money chooses me always. And finally, I have the power to be a financially successful person. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just a quick note, I am not a financial advisor by any means. I'm just sharing some of the financial lessons that I've learned over the last few years. So I'll definitely make more of these types of videos in the future as my knowledge increases on the subject because I am not a pro yet. So make sure you take everything I say with a pinch of salt and kind of apply it to what fits your circumstances. If you like this video, comment down below and let me know what you thought. And remember, I have a brand new vlog channel and I upload on that every single week. Week. that is linked in the description so you can see how I live my life on a weekly basis and don't forget you can listen to all of the YouTube videos on this channel in podcast format also linked below in the description thank you so much for watching I appreciate you and I'll see you next week bye